Ontario, Holland and Horn. Let's take a walk and I'll tell you the story about my life. I was a police officer for 20 years. I um, started in 1988. It was actually February 29th, a leap year. So my anniversary date was March 1st. And I was fired 20 years later, June, excuse me, May 8th. 2008. Um, the reason they gave is because they said that I interfered with an arrest, but the true story is that I stopped police brutality. I stopped my co-worker from choking a handcuffed man. Okay, it was November 1st, 2006. Um, there was a call of an officer in trouble, so I responded to that call. And my intentions um, were was to go and help the officer. Pretty much that day, um, Gregory, Gregory Kwiatkowski um, was punching Neil Mac in the face. Neil Mac was handcuffed sideways and Greg was punching him in the face. And basically, I didn't do anything at that time because I didn't know what had transpired prior to me coming on the scene. And then after that, um, we got Neil Mac out of the house, um, past the fence, and Greg took him, put him in a chokehold. Greg just came down, he grabbed Neil Mac, crouched down, and started choking him. So I yelled to him, Greg, you're choking him. And instead of him letting go, he just continued to choke him. And I grabbed his arm from around Neil Mac's neck. And then he came up out of his, out of the crouch position, came up and punched me in the face. So I had to have a bridge replaced. Um, then two officers, after he punched me in the face, I did go and try to hit him back. But when I tried to hit him back, two officers pulled me back, and Vanyo and Pasa Kobiak. And when they tried to pull me back, uh, well, they did pull me back. When they pulled me back, I think that may have been when my rotator cuff was uh, torn. When I was fired, my father went down to police headquarters. Um, I forgot what the issue was. But I was parked out front, um, actually double parked because I was waiting for him to come back out. So if he comes out, my Glover comes on and says, this is for um, police officers only. So I said to my sister, loud enough for my Glover to hear me, well, I wonder where murderers park. So then he said, get out of your vehicle. Get out of your vehicle. I said, yeah, right. By the time I am, father had came out. So I pulled off. And I told my sister, if he pulls me over, I want to stop because he has no reason to pull me over because he didn't like what I said because it was true. He's a murderer. Come here. Come here. Okay. Can you make me Look at the camera. Yeah. Look at the camera. And tell him what you think about me not being a police officer anymore. What do you think about me getting fired? I think it's stupid that they fired you. I think they just fired me, fired you because you didn't go by their rules. And what were their rules? I did it. Like, you got to do whatever they say, and you got to like act like a slave to them. <laughs> okay, but sit up so you can look in the camera. <clears throat> just come on left right here. Okay, so... If you saw somebody choking somebody, and do you think it would be okay to just let them choke them? No, I would Why? go. Why not? I would go and snatch them off. Why? Because like you could kill somebody by choking them. Okay. Well, they didn't think the same thing. The arbitrator rule that I was um, having I would, um, excuse me, despair treatment.
that I had disparate treatment from other officers. And then, you know, after this incident, they didn't give up. They brought me up on charges, and this is the result now. Uh, me being fired and, you know, basically just going through all the changes that I've gone through, that I've gone through just losing my pension two months prior to retirement. My time still is not um, corrected with the Buffalo Police, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much corruption going on in police departments all over. This is just one case, but I think that it's important for people to listen when an officer steps up and tells that police brutality is happening. Mm -hmm. It's not just the citizen, it's, it's the officer who's putting their life, their livelihood and everything on the line. Um, so, people need to listen now. Um, you know, Christopher Dorner's story is my story, except I chose not to resort to violence. But the point yeah. is, it's going on. Regardless of all of that, I don't wish bad on people. I just wish that I would get justice was due to me and my own kids. Because, you know, they didn't just do it to me. They did it to my five kids. So, there were six people that had to suffer from the lies. So, how do you feel about that? It was just crazy, just, my mother went from owning two houses, got my cars, just not really having to worry about nothing. Now it's like, she's struggling, and it really hurt me to see her struggling like that, all because they want to lie and throw a donor name every chance they got. Destiny, Destiny, come here. <laughs> I'm so my 14 year old. <laughs> Here's my 14 year old. Say hello to the camera. Hi, camera. <laughs> I gotta talk to you when you're done, mommy. Okay. That's what keeps me going, my kids and grandkids.